So fatherhood, crazy concept. Two months ago, I wasn't a father. And like that, I became a father. Snap of the fingers, baby's out, and your father now. What can you do? Yes, snap of the fingers. It took a lot of time. <laughs> My wife up there is quite red right now. <laughs> <laughs> but in a real sense, that's what it felt like. Looking back on it, it was 26 hours of labor for my wife, and yet it still feels like it's one by like this. And I started thinking about what it means to be a father. And one of the things I experienced uh, was this real weight of knowing that it's my responsibility for my family that I am supposed to guide them, to teach them, pray for them, have fun with them. And it's hard. It's a battle. It's a battle between good and evil, between sin and doing God's will. And that doesn't always play out how I would like it. Many times, we fathers want to be superheroes. Fathers, how many of you walked up watched the superhero movies? Raise your hand, it's okay. <laughs> I don't know what I want to raise your hand. Well, I love Batman movies. My wife doesn't know why, but I do. I want to fly through the sky in the night, fighting all the bad guys. I want to be able to rescue people, save them. I would get to use all Batman's gadgets. I would get to use the bat suit, bat vehicle. I think that's what I really, really like. Maybe some of you guys want to be like the old Western movies. <clears throat> Clint Eastwood was always outnumbered, but he always came out victorious. He never allowed a woman to be mistreated, and he was a man that he relied upon. We fathers can't be Batman or Clint Eastwood, I'm sorry. In a literal sense, I don't have the gadgets, the vehicles, the back suit, or the skills in order to take on these criminals. On top of that, both Batman and Clinton would have lost. Much like our fathers, we were humans. We are not perfect. We make many mistakes. Let's open our Bibles to Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15. It's also a home screen. Moses goes up to the mountain to 
talk to the Lord. And what do the people do? They build themselves an idol because they are scared. Well, wow, that's not the whole story. Right before this happened, what miracles did God perform to show that he was going to take care of them? He brought them out of Egypt. He brought them to the Red Sea and parted it. They walked through. And as they're walking through, here's Pharaoh's army rushing through and it blasts and destroys Pharaoh's army. He provides them in the desert. And yet, at the mountain, they still build their God. They have a big old party, and things do not end well for them. The Amorites, they worship Moloch. And how this would function in my reading was a couple would come to Moloch, and if they wanted to offer a sacrifice to him, they could. Um, the sacrifice was a child, unfortunately. They would light a big pit. And they would place the child in the statue's hand, and eventually the child would roll off the statue's hand and be sacrificed to the God. Um, and they were thinking that this would be for their prosperity financially and for fertility, future for fertility, which is crazy. So Joshua isn't just saying this as a funny thing or something small to pass over. He wants Israel, his people that have turned away from the Lord in the past, to choose God. Israel would know these stories very well. They would know what the Andrews had done. And they felt the weight of his choice. Just like Joshua is asking Israel to choose, God asks us to choose who we will serve as a God or our goal. Yeah. We can surely raise a family that looks good on the outside, helping in the community, living the poor, and helping our neighbor. But when we lock up our house at night, do we let Satan reign free? Do we let our sinful desires take control? Or is God in control? Recently, Travis Petty, Brandon Myers, Matt Peterson, Greg Ostrom, Kelly Hansen, and a few others, and myself, got the opportunity to tear apart a piece of it. And by opportunity, I mean we had to use a jackhammer, cement saw, buckets, sledgehammer, and many other tools to remove around 85 by 10 inches of concrete from the outside of the basement, all around the outside of the basement. And this was the finished basement, by the way. What was going on? Water was seeping in from around the foundation. Over the course, before all this happened, water started seeping in. Travis got the lovely job of removing the water as it is seeping into the basement. Over the course of, what was it, five days, Travis? Three days? He removed, according to his calculations, and I think they're very accurate, around 600 gallons of water in his shop. Three days. And at one point, he was using a vacuum cleaner every six minutes. I'm talking to Travis. I could hear the anxiety on his voice. It was bad. So somehow we convinced him, yeah, let's let's put a drain tile in the basin. So we do that. We spent countless hours jackhammering. Hammering and tearing concrete out in five gallon buckets. Then we got to put in the drain tile, refill the trench with pea gravel, and finally poured new concrete on top of that in order to resolve this issue of water seeping into the basement. During the process of fixing this basement, I had to spend a lot of time in the trench and running a jack hammer. And then one day I was running the jackhammer and I was standing there, had my headphones on, safety goggles. And I was sitting there a few inches at a time, like, getting rid of this concrete. And I don't remember if it was Braden or Travis or which guy, but they were shuffling as fast as I could get out of there, they were shuffling it. And as soon as we got the 
concrete and gravel out of there and started to fill more. That's how much water is coming into the basement. And I couldn't help but think how Satan sees us and tries to seep into our lives, just like the water seeping the traps in the basement. Satan doesn't come with a golden mind or with a golden cap. He comes in sneaky ways. No, he comes with your spouse doing something a little annoying. And you responding with danger. Then, later on that day, after you're already a little upset with your spouse, your wife says something. And you think she saying something about character, she's picking on you, and really she's just saying that you help you with the dishes. Again, Satan comes and tests you. He says, you shouldn't treat me that way, she has to respect you. You respond with the harsh, held, inviting words. These are minor incidents. They may not have them quite often. But this is just how Satan starts. He starts with his minor things. And he just starts to work his way in. Eventually, those minor instances happen more and more. And eventually it leads to major fights. Satan will use whatever tools to separate the father and the wife and the family from each other. It might be work, it might be your kids not sleeping well, whatever it is, Satan will try to drive away in our family. So what do we do? Let's look at our passage, Joshua 1.4.15. Joshua writes, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Fathers, today we have an opportunity to choose to follow God. We have a tendency to get caught up in work and then leave our family hanging when we get home. We like to provide financially for our families and provide a safe home for them. Some of us work long hours. We want to come home with a hot meal on the table, a nice hot shower, and flip the television on. We want to disengage and relax. And this isn't a bad thing. We need to have that time of rest. But when we do that every single day when we come home and we disengage from our family, that's when issues happen. Most of the issues my wife and I have are from miscommunication. She says something and I am often love and thinking about something with work, thinking about a TV show I just watched. Think about anything else other than just being present with her. Um, Amy knows if I'm not paying attention, I'm not looking at her. So I really try to help her say, You need to get me to look at you so I'm actually here. Otherwise, I'm thinking about all the books I have to get listed in my garage or whatever it is. When you don't listen, there's miscommunication. This leads to us getting upset with each other and saying the way this occurred. He wants to find any character flaw in us, and, and that will spill over into our homes. I can think of some of the flaws I have in my own life and how those impact not only myself, but my family as a whole. Fathers, it is our responsibility to root Satan's foothold in our families. In a real sense, we have to do what the guys from the church did in Travis' basement. We have to get a jackhammer, a hammer, all these tools, and we have to start removing the problems and sin in our life piece by piece. We have to chip, hammer, and remove the sin in our life. So how do we do this? We have to choose to put Christ first in our lives. We need to come to Christ, lay our sins before Him, and accept His free grace. Christ will start to change and shape our lives in amazing ways. He will chisel away our imperfections. It might not be easy, it might hurt, and He will mold us into His image. 
fathers, we need a strong relationship with the Lord through prayer and reading the Bible. If we don't continue to pursue our relationship with the Lord, Satan will start to seep into our life just like water did in Travis's basement, eroding our Christian families one minor incident at a time. Fathers, you have a responsibility taking care of your family, not only financially, that's the easy part, but emotionally and spiritually as well. Fathers, love your wife like Christ did. Say that again. Love your wife like Christ loves the church. Ooh. That's a big commandment. Are we just going to come home and check out? Or are we going to look in our wife and see what she needs, what our kids need from us? How can we help encourage our wives in the faith and help them out with just the daily tasks? What about children? I was talking to Greg the other week, and I remember him saying, it's so frustrating at times, and creating these little adults. And I'm like, you're right, it is. And so much more so, I can imagine God being frustrated with us at times. And not in the way frustrated we are, but sad that we're not listening to Him. And I you know Greg and Shiana are doing their absolute best to raise Greg and these all, but they're going to struggle for it. And they need Christ in the center of their relationship. Today, will we choose to follow God or will we allow Satan a foothold in our house? Will we just get behind your faith or will we do a deeper relationship with the Lord? Joshua. And here is the question for us. And if, if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, Choose this day who will serve, whether the gods your father served in the region beyond the river, or the gods the Amorites, whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Fathers, make a choice to start walking towards God's promises. I guarantee you'll transform your life and your families. We like you as well. Bye, Lord, we thank you for being a God that transforms, that you care for each and every one of us. Lord, I just pray that we will take these words to heart as fathers. I just pray that our wife will be supportive of us as we pursue this. May the states that be kind and gracious to us. Lord, I just pray that we choose to follow you. That we won't get distracted from work, that we be present with families. Because this world and our culture try to raise our families, Satan's going to try to drive a wedge in between our relationship with the wife and the Lord. The Lord, we are to be men that have Christian families found upon you. I pray that we will make you the center of our life in our family. God who cares for each and every one of us, fathers and mothers, and for those that aren't fathers and mothers. Just bless this day. Thank you again. I send Christ to this earth.